welcome back to the craft castle my name is ashley and recently i did a video on how to make this exact cake topper and within that cake topper tutorial i did tell you that a you can get this svg file found in my cardstock warehouse but B, how to customize this SVG file so you can only do just the shaker portion if you didn't want a graduation themed. However, I've been getting the question a lot of how in the world can I make my own shaker templates? And today I'm going to show you how to do it all within Cricut Design Space and using their free shapes. You're not going to have to pay for an SVG. You're not going to have to pay for a shape or anything like that. I'm going to show you how to do it for free all within Cricut Design Space. Are you ready to learn? It's going to be so stinking easy. Let's go. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this with a few different shapes. I'm going to tell you right now, once I show you how to do it once for something, Everything else that I am going to show you with the shapes, it's going to be really easy because it's the same steps over and over again, just with a different shape. So very first thing we want to do is go over here into shapes. Oh, actually, the very first step you want to do is open up a blank window in design space. Then you want to do the shapes. OK, let's start it the easiest way possible, and that is with a circle. So we're just going to hit this circle. Now let's make this big so it fits into our screen. We can resize this later. Let's say hypothetically that we want our outside portion of our shaker to be 13 inches. So I'm gonna make this just an even number at 13. This right here is going to be the very back of my cake topper. So um, let's just say my very back of my cake topper, I want it to be white. Okay, then we're gonna click out. All right, now what I wanna do is I wanna start building the shaker element. Some people like to use strips of foam. Other people like myself like to use what I like to call cardstock donuts. That's not a technical term. That is just something that helps me in my brain remember what it is that I need to cut out. So the reason for me not using the foam strips, I don't personally like the look of it on the sides. The sides in the back to me always matter. So if I don't like the sides, I'm not gonna use it. So the sh strips of foam, I don't really care for. I like to do the donuts. How to create the donut is, is we need to come up here into offset. This box is going to pop up. Generally, what I would tell you to do is create an offset is you would wanna go to the right of this line. However, I don't want to go to the right because I already have the dimensions of the outside already set. So I'm going to go over here to the left of that line. When you start doing that, do you see this blue line that comes around? That is going to be the inner portion of your donut. Now the lines between this black line and this blue line, everything that's in here, that's going to be how thick your donut is. The thinner of a donut, the more it's going to be flimsy. Now, it's totally doable to have a thin donut. However, let's make it easy on yourself and not have too thin of donuts. So we are just gonna come over here and we are going to make this a little bit thicker. So we're moving on to the left. Okay, when you have the size donut that you want, so all we're looking at is in between this black line and that blue line. So I like the thickness in between here. I am gonna press apply. Now we have two circles. We have what is going to be our very back of our shaker, and then we're going to have the inside portion of our donut. What you want to do now is selecting both pieces, the very back piece and then also that black circle. We are going to copy and paste. Then what you want to do, we're just going to drag this over here to the right, and you want to come down here and you want to press slice. Now we're going to have one piece right here, do you see that? That is a donut, okay? So all you wanna do now is delete these circles. You don't need them. And actually, you don't even need this portion anymore. So we can delete that too. So here is the very back portion of our cake topper. This right here is going to be the donut. Now, when you make a shaker, you can't just do one donut. Because if you just do one donut, it, glitter is generally thicker than that. 
I always say the rule of thumb if you're using my cardstock found in my cardstock warehouse is you need a minimum of four donuts. So we have one donut. We're going to copy and paste. There is our second donut. And just to be fun, let's select both of the donuts we already have on our screen and copy and paste. Now what we have is one very back piece of our shaker and then you have four donuts. If you're using thicker gems, glitter, tubing, like the metal tubing you can find at the Dollar Tree, if you're using thicker stuff, thicker material for the inside of your shaker cake topper, you're gonna need more donuts. Four is kind of like my magic rule. I have a lot of uh, sequin glitter in here and I have four donuts and everything is moving around just fine. Also, look at the size of this. Looks absolutely amazing. So if you want more in there, then you're gonna want more donuts. Now what you need is your sheet of acetate. That is the clear thing that we put onto our shaker components. Fun fact, I actually don't use acetate. I use clear transparencies. It is cheaper. You can get it off Amazon and it's significantly cheaper than buying sheets of acetate and it's just as thick. Also, if you have the plastic sheeting from your brand new Cricut mats, that's also acetate. You can just cut those too. But regardless, now you need a sheet of acetate. So all you wanna do is you wanna select the very back piece of your cake topper and you wanna copy and paste. This right here is our sheet of acetate. I always say when I try and remember what to cut with acetate, I move it over here to the very right and I always turn my sheet of acetate over to a very light blue. So over here, you're gonna have a white swatch. We want to click on that, and I'm gonna click the blue. I want it even lighter than that, so I'm gonna go down into advanced, and I'm gonna click all, like really light. So now you can see that this right here is light blue, which to me signifies that that is a sheet of acetate. In every single shaker project that I have, this like extreme light blue is always gonna be acetate for me. Okay, technically the shaker portion is complete. You have a sheet of acetate, four donuts, your very backer, and when you glue those all together, you're gonna be able to have a shaker. However, when we glue our acetate onto our donut, I personally use clear silicone glue for this. However, you still can see the silicone glue even after you glue it. So then what I do is I take one more donut, so just click a donut, we're gonna copy and paste. And for this particular cake topper, I have a green one. So now I can take this one and let's just turn this over to a different color. Let's say I want like a mirror gold on there. So I'm gonna move this over to the right. So this is what your setup is going to look like. You're gonna have a very back piece. That is going to be the start of your shaker sandwich. You're gonna have four donuts that are gonna go in between your shaker sandwich. Then you're gonna have a sheet of acetate. And that sheet of acetate is going to be the other part of your sandwich that's gonna hold everything together. And that's gonna sandwich all your donuts and all your shaker components together. Now, gluing your acetate on top of the donuts because the acetate is clear, you're probably gonna see some ugly glue lines. No one wants to see the ugliness. So then we're gonna take another cutesy little donut cardstock we're gonna glue that on top of the acetate, hiding the glue lines inside the back of our new Marigold donut. Did I lose you? Because honestly, this is it. I, if, if you have figured this portion out, then you can do any shaker cake topper, anything. Okay, at this point, because I did say that we just sized this to fit in our screen and hypothetically we wanted it 13 inches. If you wanted it to be smaller or larger or whatever, what you would do is, is you would select everything. You wanna align this to the center. And then you wanna, at this point, make sure that this right here is locked and we can resize this any size that you want. Okay, so at this point, what you wanna do is you wanna save this because what you can do is, is the next time you wanna make a shaker cake topper using a circle template, all you have to do is open this up and then customize this thing. So let's go over here into save 
and we will do circle shaker cake topper template. And then you just wanna press save. Okay, let's say that we wanna do a harder shape. So let's just erase that. Let's go back into shapes and let's do an even harder one. We'll do a star, okay? We're gonna make this as big as we can inside of our screen just so we can see what we're doing. Now, I want this backer piece to be clear, just like what we have here. See how you can see me through here? Hello. Okay, this right here, the very backer is clear. So remember what I said, acetate for me is very light blue. So I'm gonna take this black and I'm gonna click over here on the swatch and I'm gonna make this light blue. Click out of that. Okay, then what you want to do is make your donuts. I always like to go in, not out, because let's just say I did want a 27 inch shaker cake topper. What you wanna do is go into offsets, and instead of going to the right, remember the right of the line, you wanna to go to the left. Now, the Cricut already auto-generated point, the negative .417 that I used for the previous circle shaker cake topper. If you don't like that and you want a thicker donut, you totally can just keep going to the left until you have the thickness that you want in between the black line and this blue line. When you have that done, you just wanna press apply. Okay, the very next step is we are going to select both pieces, the original star and that black offset, and we're gonna copy and paste. What you're gonna do is come over here to the right with the one that you copied and pasted. We wanna come down here to slice. Now what you can do is, is taking and clicking on that blue donut. This is what your donut's gonna look like. We wanna drag this over here. We want to delete this heart and this heart. We don't need them. Also going over here to the left, we are gonna take this and we're gonna delete it because we don't want it. Okay, so this right here is going to be a sheet of acetate, right? This right here, I actually decided, you know what? I want this to be white cardstock. So clicking the donut that we have, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna change this over to white for white cardstock. Now, what was that magic number donut that I said, if you're using my cardstock, what you should be doing? Four. So we're gonna select that one donut, copy and paste. There is donut two. And just so we can cut a little corners, we're gonna select both of those donuts and do copy and paste, and now we have four. Okay, now the very next step, we have the back of our sandwich, we have the contents of our sandwich. What do you need for the top of your sandwich? Another slice of bread. So we're gonna to go to the very back, which is gonna be that sheet of acetate, and we are gonna copy and paste. I am not going to change this over. I am gonna keep it the sheet of acetate. We're gonna move this over to the right because you're gonna end up getting something that looks like this with two sheets of acetate in between that you can see through. You can fill your star element with all the pretty glitters, put it all together with two sheets of acetate and it'll be this see-through shaker, gorgeous piece of work. Then what you wanna do is because we're gluing clear on top of something, you're gonna be able to see the ugly glue lines no matter how clear your glue is. So we wanna take one of the donuts and we're gonna copy and paste. And this right here, you can keep it white if you want to. If you wanted a different color, you would wanna change the color at this point. Now, here's the deal, is if you have clear on the very back, just like in mine, here is the front. On the very back, because I am particular about what looks like on the front, looks good on the back too, I always like to hide the ugly. So on the front, we have this, and on the back, we even have some glitter. So I even hid the glue marks on the back. So whatever you do to the front, we are gonna copy and paste. And this right here, we want to arrange it to the back. And this is going to be your back pretty. And let's just say the front of us, because we got a lot of blue and white. Let's just say the front of what you're sealing in, you want this to be like a light pink. So we're gonna change this over to like a light pink. And we'll go to the back and we'll change the very back one to light pink as well. So now, every single time someone holds this up, it's going to look amazing from front to back. You're gonna have on the very back, you're gonna have a very cute pink piece of cardstock, closing in all those ugly glue marks that you get from your donuts because your sheet of acetate is gonna be clear. You're gonna have your bread, then you're gonna have your contents of your sandwich, which is the four donuts. 
Then you're gonna have the other slice of bread that holds your sandwich into place. And then we're gonna hide all the ugly with the very front cutesy little pink star. Now, building shakers, once you get the easy steps like this, Building more complex shakers is so stinking easy. Practicing the basic shapes will make it so much easier. Okay, same thing we did before with the very first shaker. What you wanna do to resize this is we are gonna select everything and we are gonna align this to the center. You wanna make sure that this right here is locked and then at this point you can change the size of your shaker. You always wanna make sure that you resize all of your elements at the same time, just to make sure that everything is going to be sized exactly the same. Then what you wanna do is let's say that you wanna make this another template. Then we're gonna go over here into save and then save as, and let's just change this over to star shaker cake topper template. And I'm gonna delete that one and then press save. Okay, and then remember what I said, once you get the basics of making shaker cake toppers with just free shapes, you're gonna be able to make shaker cake toppers like this. Let me show you. We have a rainbow shaker cake topper that has absolutely amazing with the sheet of acetate, the very back, you are going to make something like this with the steps that I just gave you. Isn't this so stinking amazing? I'm gonna cut this out and I'm gonna show you what this ends up looking like because it is absolutely gorgeous. So by learning how to make the shakers and the basic shapes, then you're gonna be able to learn how to make shakers like this, where every single layer is its own color. Do you see this rainbow? Absolutely stinking gorgeous. And like the red stays with the red, the yellow with the yellow. This is so stinking cute. This end result ended up being phenomenal. And all I used was my basic knowledge on how to make a shaker cake topper. Pretty cool, huh? All right, y'all, I sure hope I inspired you to create and I'll see you later.